Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I've got some very bullish news for you guys. You don't want to miss this. Citibank has made some bullish statements around Bitcoin saying it's at the tipping point of adoption. We also got Kevin O'Leary, Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary doing a 180 capitulating into Bitcoin. And and guys, Rakuten, the major e-commerce giant, is starting to accept crypto payments and much more. We're going to break it down. Before we do, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. So right now, Bitcoin seeing a little bit of a rally from a 24-hour perspective, given the bullish news from Citibank and some others. So you can see a big green candle here, but... But I am cautiously optimistic. Um, while I would love this to be our breakout to sixty to seventy thousand dollars, I do feel there's still some red candles that may come along before we do that. But you know, it doesn't matter from the daily, hourly, weekly standpoint because we're looking at this macro level, right? I'm a macro level investor, so that's how I'm looking at it, and I'm a hodler, so I'm not day trading or leverage trading or whatever. So it doesn't matter to me. I'm looking at long term gains here. So. Anyway, if this is the breakout, I'm happy about it. Is it very likely? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Uh, my gut tells me we could see some more red candles here. Anyway, that's what's kind of happening there with the price. But some big news. Michael Saylor, once again, the biggest Bitcoin bull ever. Uh, his company, MicroStrategy, has purchased an additional 328 Bitcoins for $15 million in cash at an average price of $45,710 per Bitcoin. So if you were buying Bitcoin at the $45,000 to $50,000 mark, you were on the side of smart money because remember, macro level, you're, we're looking at $100,000 plus. So you would easily double your money, right? Now, is that a certainty? No. And obviously you need to do your research here, not financial advice. But here, Michael says, as of uh, March 1st, 2021, we hodl around 90,859 Bitcoins acquired for approximately uh, $2.186 billion at an average price of $24,063 per Bitcoin. Insane, guys. They, they're they approaching near 100,000 in Bitcoin that they're holding. That is crazy. And that doesn't include Michael's personal holding. This is just micro strategy. So Michael himself, he owns a good amount of Bitcoin as well. Um, he talked about it in the interview I had with him a month ago. So very bullish institutions, companies continue to buy Bitcoin. And here, Citibank says Bitcoin at tipping point as institutions come on board. Looking forward, a city report suggests Bitcoin could become the currency of choice for international trade. Very interesting and very bullish. While perception of the cryptocurrency varies greatly, it is undoubtedly the inspiration for a blockchain-based economy and has created a new decentralized cryptocurrency market. According to a paper by City Global Perspectives and Solutions, the bank's thought leadership arm. Uh, City describes Bitcoin as blockchain's north star, owing its oh, excuse me owing to its core innovations that formed the building blocks that launched the eco ecosystem. Whether or not it seeds the status, the stablecoins or central bank digital currencies (CBDCs) depends on how it will be able to deal with inefficiencies relating to speed, scale, and so on. Um, I absolutely agree with this statement. Look. It, Will Bitcoin become the global cryptocurrency? I don't know yet because of what they mentioned, the speed and scalability. I do believe it's a global hedge as similar to gold, right? Gold is not used for daily uh, transactions, but it is owned by every central bank and, and people who want to have a hedge, right? Those are facts. And if gold is, it, excuse me, if Bitcoin is uh, gold 2.0, it's going to be held across the globe, right? But is it going to be transacted with daily? I don't think so, unless the Lightning Network makes significant, significant improvements. I think there are other cryptocurrencies that, that are much faster and scalable, like XRP. And look, there's going to be CBDCs coming soon. I'm interviewing Chris Giancarlo tomorrow to talk about the digital dollar. So you guys don't want to miss that. Make sure you got the notification bell enabled. So uh, we'll see what happens. But from a hedge as gold, that use case, absolutely. We are seeing that with corporates and institutional investors putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet. And of course, I've interviewed the mayor of Miami. If you haven't seen the interview, check it out. 
he's looking to allocate some of the city's treasury reserves in Bitcoin. So you're going to have, I think, local governments, some central banks, in uh, maybe not the United States, but other countries like could Venezuela and Argentina use Bitcoin in their balance sheet? Hell yeah, because their fiat is garbage. Maybe Nigeria as well, right? So it is also significant uh, whether institutional interest cools as life returns to normal post-COVID-19 and inflammatory fears abate. Dampening institutional enthusiasm would remove a key source to support Bitcoin and potentially the broader ecosystem, thus pushing it back to more of its speculative roots, the bank paper argues. City uh, conclusion references the oft-repeated quote by Arthur Schopenhauer, if I'm saying that right, all truth passes through three stages. First, it's ridic ridiculed. Second, it's violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as self-evident. Uh, I like that. The fact that this progression uh, has occurred in just over a decade makes Bitcoin remarkable regardless of its future, the report concludes. So very bullish news coming out here from uh, Citibank. And we saw just recently JP Morgan said allocate 1% in Bitcoin. All these banks and all these financial institutions are capitulating. And of course, this is an emerging asset class. It is the next tech revolution, right, with crypto and blockchain and digital assets. So getting in early, having a position is the key. And I think years ago, they were against it. And I think a lot of it was smoke and mirrors. We're going to talk about it, what Kevin O'Leary did. And they accumulated and now they're flipping the narrative, right? So very bullish news. It's why I hold Bitcoin in my portfolio. But of course, I hold Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, and so forth. Uh, Bitcoin is really the rising tide that lifts all boats. We haven't decoupled from it yet. So jumping into the next news here, Twitter just announced a $1.25 billion convertible note offering. Given the recent treasury strategy of MicroStrategy, remember MicroStrategy did the same thing. They raised debt to then use that money to buy Bitcoin. Could Jack, Jack Dorsey, be planning to put Bitcoin on Twitter's balance sheet? I think this is very likely, very highly probable because Square is doing it and we know Jack is a Bitcoin bull. Uh, you know, Anthony Pompliano says here, time will tell, but there are a few people who understand the power of Bitcoin like Jack. This guy just created a Bitcoin fund with uh, hip hop artist Jay-Z, a 500 Bitcoin fund for India and, and uh, some countries in Africa, if I'm not mistaken. So it's 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 not far fetched to think Twitter is going to add Bitcoin to their balance sheet. I think this is coming very soon, right? Uh, once again, Square has been doing it, and we know Jack is connected there. So I think we'll probably see some big news soon about this, and they probably maybe already accumulate. Well, if they just raised it, I don't know what the timing is, but they're probably going to accumulate in this phase where Bitcoin's below fifty thousand. So. Here's uh, the big capitulation here from Mr. Wonderful, um, Kevin O'Leary. He has put 3% of his portfolio in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, which he is now recommending to all investors. Oh, but I thought Bitcoin was going to make grown men cry. I thought Bitcoin was crap and garbage, um, like he would say years ago. Remember, guys, the famous clip on CNBC, he called it crypto crap. He was against Anthony Pompliano, but smoke and mirrors. I did a video where, you remember in 2013, he was on a Canadian TV show, and he, he was talking very positive up about Bitcoin. Fast forward to 2017, he's trashing it, right? He's trashing it in the bear market, putting sell pressure. He's probably shorting it and also accumulating. Now, oh, um, you know, I've added it to my portfolio, blah, blah, blah. So Shark Tank uh, star Kevin O'Leary, a.k.a. Mr. Wonderful, has begun investing in Bitcoin. Having previously called the cryptocurrency garbage, he has now changed his mind and believes that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. He is also getting used to the volatility of Bitcoin and believes that institutional investors are willing to hold through price fluctuations. So... This is uh, this this is just amazing to watch, guys. I tweeted about it, and I, I those of you who have been subscribers to this channel, you know I've talked about him and Mark Cuban for years, and I told you guys watch the smoke and mirrors move. They go on TV, they put out a narrative, they do the opposite, then they come back and and then uh, do the you know. <laughs> go against what they were telling the public and that is how a lot of these guys stay wealthy and they make money right and the average joe and jill 
God bless their hearts. You know, they don't have the time to in, do research and invest. And uh, well, I shouldn't say invest, but research and 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 uh, really dive into. Okay, what's happening with this asset class? Where are we in the timeline? Right. Many folks just follow the media, they follow uh, the herd, right? Instead of doing their own research. So I always say, you guys, tap yourself on the back that you understand this. You understand market cycles. You understand how uh, the 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 narrative is played out in the media. And that's what. Kevin O'Leary was doing. I remember Mark Cuban was calling, uh, well, saying, I would rather have bananas than Bitcoin. And you go look at that video now, you see how ludicrous it was, but he was saying it in the bear market and putting the sell pressure, right? So you that's why you have to understand the fundamentals. You have to understand investment principles, market principles. So you're not following these guys, you know, as far as they're, what they're saying, but watch what they're doing, right? It's not what they're saying, it's what they're doing. And here, full capitulation, and, uh, you know, just even, guys, it was just li literally a month ago, he was like, oh, grown men are going to cry, investing in this. But he said it on TV. And, uh, he, of course, trying to shake weak hands out, right? And he, look, these guys, we've seen it with the GameStop thing. A lot of these hedge funds and wealthy investors, they go on TV and they put a narrative out there to, f to boost their uh, position, whether it be short or long. I hope that sinks in. I hope you grasp that, right? And you don't take verbatim what they say on TV, but rather go do the research. What are they holding? Who are they connected to? Where are we in the market cycle? What's the Fed doing as far as buying up, right? They may go out there and say, oh yeah, the stock market is gonna go crash and blah, 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 but then the Fed is about to go pump it, right? Like they were doing last year. You gotta understand these things, guys, and I hope you do. I hope this is helpful. Now, moving ahead, e-commerce giant Rakuten now lets users shop with cryptocurrency. The move opens up uh, crypto payments at thousands of merchants across Japan that accept Rakuten Pay and Rakuten Point Card. And eventually, you know this is gonna come to the US. This is big, guys. Um, just yesterday, in a video, I covered uh, Google integrating crypto into their finance uh, tabs and whatever it may be, and also uh, a major point of sale merchant uh, service integrating crypto. So the infrastructure being built out here. According to a recent <clears throat> announcement, users of Rakuten's cryptocurrency wallet can now exchange Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash for the firm's e-money, Rakuten Cash, to charge its pay app and point, a point credit card. The firm says it is not levying up fees, so such transfers, which can range from 1,000 yen to a maximum of 100,000 yen in total value per month. The move means customers can pay with crypto at thousands of merchants across Japan that accept Rakuten Pay and Rakuten Point Card. Guys, bullish news if you're holding crypto. All the on and off ramps being built here, the ability to buy, trade, spend, custody, everything that exists with traditional currencies and the traditional financial markets being set up for crypto. And you know what's going to happen next as mass FOMO kicks in. Now, speaking of adoption, supercar maker Mazanti cruises into crypto with Bitcoin payments token sale. Mazanti's security tokens will provide a 50% revenue share in the sale of a special edition hypercar, but so far interest has been limited. So what is this? A couple things to take away from here. We've been talking about the token economy on this channel for years. You're going to have paintings, commodities, real estate, uh, cars, everything tokenized. And you can invest in that. And as the value goes up, goes up, you kind of earn like a dividend or you can sell it, right? Kind of like stocks and uh, security token offerings. I've spoken to the guys at Securitize. I've interviewed um, Jamie uh, Hines, I think his name is. I apologize. I don't remember his name. But anyway, long story short, I've been talking about this for years and we're gonna see a lot of it happen and NFTs is a big part of it as well. So very bullish and they're gonna uh, ex be accepting a Bitcoin for payments here. So uh, that's that's adoption, my friends, that's adoption. And game theory, remember game theory, what's gonna happen? Could Ferrari, Lamborghini, these other folks do it? Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna come. No one wants to get left behind here, especially with something like cryptocurrencies that is rapidly on the rise. Now, finally, Cardano. I hold Cardano. I wish I held more because it is doing well. Congrats to all of you making money on it. And I do think it can go higher. So Cardano approaches a new major upgrade as uh, ADA posts an inspired rally. Cardano's merry upgrade and token gains are poised to compete with Ethereum, while metrics suggest that Ethereum is still the king. Ethereum is still the king. It has first mover advantage. And if it does not improve because these gas fees are ridiculous, 
it will lose it, its place eventually. Is that going to happen tomorrow or six months from now? No. But I do think as, as things progress, we could see Cardano bypass Ethereum. Right now, I don't think Cardano has a shot um, just because Ethereum, once again, first mover advantage. I've shown you guys Amazon's uh, blockchain service. They're going to use Hyperledger and Ethereum. So th there's... Ethereum has a lot of adoption and the staking um, that's coming is going to be big. So, well, let's see what happens. This is competition. And that's why I hold both. I hold both Ethereum and Cardano. I don't put all my eggs in one basket because you, you, we don't know what's going to happen one to two years from now. What if Cardano fails? What if Ethereum fails? You still have a position to make money. So hope you guys get that. And um, we'll see how these uh, upgrades uh, help Cardano in, in helping it g gain more market share over Ethereum, right? More adoption. And that's adoption's a key because you can do all this upgrades and so forth, but if you don't get the adoption, that's not going to help you, right? Um, the long game is getting adoption by enterprises and companies, and, and that will further drive the value up. So guys, lots of bullish news. Um, what do you think about this city report? I think they're on point. You know, it's it's well balanced. They're not saying Bitcoin is definitely going to be the, the world currency and all that, but they're saying there's a potential if it's able to scale. Uh, but I do think from a hedge as goal 2.0, digital goal, it absolutely is there. Um, we're just seeing the adoption globally, guys, and, and this is big. And uh, that's why I hold in my portfolio. And um, we can certainly expect all, new all-time highs this year. And let's see uh, if this breakout here is indeed the breakout upwards or, like I said, some more red candles before we, we head up. Guys, what do you think? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Share this video. And I'll talk to you.